My name is Josh Phoenix and I decided to do the course that I'm doing, which is English Literature degree. Because I looked around at what I wanted to do, I began as a mature student by coming back to do my GCSEs. I did English, Maths and Science. I'm abysmal at science, I'm bad at maths, but I'm good at English. So I thought, go down that route. And then through the help of the lecturers, began to understand what it was, applied for the degree, came on. And at first, was a major challenge because I thought I'm a native English speaker. Our boss, it was not so at all. It was quite difficult to wrap my head around, but I got there in the end and I'm enjoying a lot of aspects about it. So I'm going to start with what I enjoy. So yeah, I enjoy the engagement primarily with the knowledge, with the books, because you look at these things, the, the work that we use, and it takes a while to get into it. You've got to dissect it, pull it apart, but once you do, you start to see it, and that has enabled me to open my mind more to approach problems and everyday life aspects differently, to see every angle, every side, and judge it accordingly. It's given me the skills necessary to think analytically, which to me is very important and is something that I lacked. So yeah, there's that. Secondly, I would have to say, The difficulties that I faced were common difficulties that every student faces, no matter what age group, whether you're coming in as fresh from your A levels or as an adult returning as a mature student. The support network that is present at Doncaster College and the university sector at Doncaster College is phenomenal. They help you in every aspect. You have a problem, you let them know. So I myself, I'm not just a mature student, I have a form of autism, Asperger's. So English was very difficult for me to, well, in general, figure out because there's no right or wrong answer. There's no absolutes. It's great. One point of view is no better or worse than the other. I couldn't wrap my head around that, but with help, I've gotten there. So there's that. I would also like to talk about the lecturers. When I started, the lecturers were quite imposing because they're all doctors, they're all PhDs. I come from a background where not many people have done education in my family. And I've noticed that at Doncaster College, a lot of the people come from that background. It's Doncaster. There's not a lot of opportunity in this area, but they're very informal, they're very good. And there's no stigma attached. It's open to anybody of all ages, all backgrounds. And I think once people get past that and actually arrive here and start their journey into higher education, they will learn that it is an open network, it's a safe network, it enables you to be yourself, it caters to you individually, it's case by case basis, student by student basis. So the approach given by the support network, by the lecturers, is different for each student. And after the initial time period, once we get to know one another from the lecturer's side of point of view and the students, it becomes a repartee, almost. I think that's how you say the word. And there's that. So English, as a subject is quite unique because it wraps up several aspects of every other thing in life. It's not just the language spoken or the literature you read, it's the ideologies it presents. You have to be an amateur historian, an amateur poet, an amateur writer, an amateur critic. You have to collate all of this into a way that makes sense and it shows you aspects of humanity in very different ways. So it's enabled me in today's world, especially with the last year, Instead of approaching the pandemic and with the news spreading fear, normally I'd have been afraid. Now I apply the analytical mind that I have gained from this course and I'm able to dissect it and look at it for what it is. So I'm not saying English enables you to look at everything without emotion or stoically, but it enables you to take that step back, to be able to analyse, to think, to project what you know onto things that are necessarily different. So it has given me the skills, not only to look at things for what they are, but to be able to process things for what they are, to be able to rationalise instead of an emotive response, which is what most people do, which is what I used to do. It's given me a lot, actually. The building, the Doncaster College building, must put a lot of people off, I think, because it's Doncaster College, it's Doncaster. But once you get past that stigma, you start to realise that it is a hub of not only higher education, but education in general. It's a social hub. The people that you meet on these courses at first may not seem to be the people that would have attracted you, that you would have bonded with or become friends with. But once you sit down and are engaged with them, 
you start to see them for interesting and you start to bond and work together and you make friends and they also help you. So, for example, I was struggling on a project last year and I just could not wrap my head around it. After opening up to my classmates, to my peers, I started to see things not necessarily from their point of view, but I was able to entertain that my point of view was not the only point of view. It helped remove the limits that I had placed upon myself because I, like many others, face something. If I don't understand it, it terrifies me. So I just don't want to know. Now I can take that step back and actually process it and understand it better with the help of others. So it's given me a lot of help with the social skills, with any being able to communicate, to talk, to understand, just to small talk with people. So I'm thankful for that as well. It's not just the analytical academic structure that it's given me or the ability to understand higher educational work. It's the ability to understand people. And they are multifaceted, just like higher education. It is all this multifaceted faceted spectrum that once you dive in and once you get past that feeling of I'm overwhelmed, you start to settle and start to realise that we're all in this in the same boat. It doesn't matter, as I've said, what age group you are, what background you come from. The support is there. The people are there and it's just a really fun experience once you realise that. I'm doing a project at the minute that is quite overwhelming, especially now. It's a community based project, so ideally I'd be out in the world collating with people, but I can't do that because of the pandemic that will not be named. So I'm having now to assess my thinking and work online and I'm having to blend the digital approach with the literal approach. And with the help of the lecturers, my classmates and the people I'm working with, it's becoming this really fun project of I don't know what I'm doing, but together we are figuring it out and we are getting to the point where it's starting to take form. It's starting to become something that I can present to people and say, this is what I have done. And it has enabled me to reach people I wouldn't normally reach. I've contacted organisations for the project that I'm working on that I wouldn't have spoken to in every, any other area of my life. So it builds bridges, higher education, and it opens doors into areas of the world that you may feel you can't access or you shouldn't access. I know several people who thought at the time when I started higher education who told me, what's the point? And I thought, why do you think that? But once I got there and I tell them now that it's not what you think it is, it's not this stigmatised, snobbish environment. It's really not. It's the same as college really except you're doing degree work so it's fun that is what I would say above all else it's fun I mean you have to do the work the work can be grinding there are days I just sit there and think don't want to do this and then those deadlines start to creep up and start to get scarier and scarier and scarier but it is fun and then you breathe once you've got the assignments done and you think I got them done I'm finished with that you have a week or two or three and then you get ready to prepare for the next stage and every assignment gets easier. It gets better to understand, easier to work on. The skills that you won't even realise you retain. Skills I've retained from my two years at university surprise me sometimes because I'll be doing an essay and it just flows now naturally. Whereas when I began, it was a real disjointed struggle to try and make my work make sense. So it's a sense of self-realisation when you realise that this is sinking in. The lecturers are brilliant they teach in such a way that it sinks in and I know a lot of people are put off by the building Doncaster College and the small classes I've heard it said that it's not proper university it is but it's actually far better than proper university because the classes are small you have far more personal time with the lecturers whereas if you were at a proper institution there are two three hundred students on your course you have to fight for the time with the lecturer whereas now Whenever you need help, all you have to do is email them and book a tutorial and within a day you're seeing them and they're talking you through it and they can have extended time to talk you through it. It is almost like having a life coach in a way. So I struggle sometimes, as everybody does. I'll contact one of my lecturers and we'll sit for half an hour, an hour until I can finally say that I understand it. So there are massive benefits to actually studying at Doncaster University Centre as opposed to a fully fledged university institution. Now, I had the attitude at the start that it wouldn't be as good. But now I have changed that opinion and I'm actually grateful that I am in such a small personal environment as opposed 
to the impersonal massive environment that is proper university. It's helped me more than if I were a, a fully fledged university. The degree as well, Doncaster College partnered with Hull University, so the degree I am studying is a Hull University degree. So it's the best of both worlds. I get the smaller personal environment where I can learn better and have the relationships with the lecturers that enable me to bring the best of me into my work. And I get the degree from Hull University. So it's a win win, I feel. And I think people need not only to stop seeing higher education as this stigma that it's not for me, but also stop seeing Doncaster College as just a college. It is altogether an all rounder of a place that will give you the best chance you have to get the future that you want. The work that I use and I study and I work with with this degree is very different. The first term I was studying poetry from several poets from the Renaissance in the 1500s through to the Industrial Revolution in the early 19th, 20th century. Now I'm working with modernism, with early modern period, with different time periods and English throughout history has been a reflection of the times. So the works that we stood here are always a reflection of the time period in which they were written. The Renaissance was a boom in intellectual thinking. It was after the Middle Ages where the knowledge of ancient Rome was being rediscovered. The works reflect that. The Industrial Revolution was a shift from naturalism to mo the modern world. A lot of our institutions, our devices, our mentality and our ideals began in the Industrial Revolution. To see the shift from what we imagine as the olden days to the new days is reflected. And that's helped me not only look at humanity and myself differently, it's also helped me to look at the world today differently. And history repeats itself. So you can look at things thanks to this degree, thanks to English, I can look at it and think, OK, this is happening. It's bad. But there's only so many places that it can go. So then it's enabled me to rationally look at things and plot where they will end up. The futurism in an aspect of English that we've touched upon, the ability to predict the future, not in a psychic way, but in an analytical, practical way. There are only so many things that can happen in certain orders. So it gives people safety, the knowledge that things will be OK to look and know that this is where I will end up. And that has helped me in my life as well. We all have worries, financial worries, worries at home, family worries. And when people get afraid, they get overwhelmed. Now I can take that step back, breathe and think, OK, this has happened. I can plan it out. I can guess where it's going to go and I can prepare. And I cannot believe that this is true, but it is. It is studying English that has enabled me to do that. Now, I started this journey of higher education because ultimately I want a career with autism and also Tourette's syndrome, which I have. I've lived on disability most of my life and I thought I want more for myself for my life for those in my life. I want I want more. That's not a bad thought. It's just I want more. So I began it and now I'm starting to think as I'm approaching my third year and ending this degree what I want to do with my life. Now most people ask me I come back with the response. I just don't know. But ultimately I think as cliche as it sounds I would like to teach and I would like to teach because the teachers and lecturers I've discovered at Doncaster College are the teachers and lecturers I wish I had as a teenager. They are how education should be. They are what teachers should be. They not only have the passion behind them to teach this subject, they have the knowledge base to teach this subject, but they are also caring and compassionate and they help and they understand. And education is a right, it's not a privilege. It should be available to everybody and it is available to everybody and I think these social barriers that prevent higher education from being accepted by everybody need to be dissolved. So I want to teach to help people as I have been helped, not only with opening my mind and gaining an education, but also to better understand the world around me as we enter this age of misinformation and miscommunication, this digital bombardment of just fear, fear consume. I think it's more important than ever that people need to know how to navigate it, how to assess it, how to know what they're seeing, know what is true, 
what is not true and how to think for themselves. I think that's important as well. Being able to think for yourself, knowing that you have that knowledge, that confidence in yourself from three years of a degree to look at things and think for yourself. So I would hope that being able to teach, I can show people of all ages, not necessarily young or old, but the entire spectrum, how to think for yourself, how to look at things and know. There are some negatives to doing higher education, but they are not negatives in which way people would think. The biggest for me personally is studying English has given me the analytical procedure as I've discussed. So now whenever I watch a film, I can predict how it's going to end and it sucks. It sucks. The same with books, the same with all forms of media, because I've studied so much media, so much books and even films. It takes the fun out of that in a way. I can now see where it's going. So there's that. Also, the negative side to study in history and English literature, particularly throughout history, is you start to see a lot of the negativity in history and humanity in the world. But you also see the positivity. It kind of disillusions you in a sense. It takes away that sense that the world is magical and fun, but it replaces it with not just cold practicality and rationality, but also awareness that that is what it is. And I think that most of all is what I personally am grateful for, to look at the world and say, this is what it is and not be depressed by that, but be able to be excited by that, to be able to see things for what they are. And that is a big deal to me personally.